So we've seen how to do procedures, how to use procedures with, with loops, uh, how to use our global variables. And uh, we also learn about the uses operator in case you wanna use that instead of pushing every time. So now let's look at linking to an external library. And as I mentioned before, the book does provide us with a library called the Irving 32 library, which is a, uh, a library created by the author, Tip Irvin, very handy. So what is a link library? It's a file that contains procedures that have already been compiled and translated into machine code, all right? So uh, they are already ready for us to be used. Um, we could create our own library, okay? As long as you create your source files and then you create your object files and make sure that then you create your library extensions. So the Irwin 32 library has a lot of procedures that do things for us, all right? Uh, we can call each one of those procedures the same way that you call a procedure that you create yourself, uh, but it's important that you include the following line of code. So you must have the include Irving32.inc at the beginning of your program in order to be able to use these procedures and to use the library. Okay. Also, the library needs to exist in an area of your drive that can be easily reachable by your assembler. Now, this uh, means that you have to store it somewhere in your C drive uh, so that it can be easily reached right there. So here we're having this example, include every 32.inc. Notice it says .code, and then here it calls something called grid hex, hex and call the new line um, procedure, et cetera, et cetera. So these are procedures that have already been done for us. There's a lot of other procedures in this file. There's a procedure that closes files. Uh, this one clears the screen and so clears the console screen and puts the cursor at the top. So for example, you could be writing your code and you know, sometimes you're writing code and then you have like a lot of code going down and you have to scroll up and down and it just makes things look kind of messy. Well, you can use a clear screen and it wipes down the whole screen and you can go back to the top so that every time that you maybe show a menu, for example, right? You display the menu and then you clear screen. So you go right to the top. So it's just, you know, something nice. Um, you can create output files, uh, dump memory. So for example, here you have a, instead of using the Visual Studio looking at the memory, at the registers there, you can uh, also call a dump mem or dump regs, and that one will write down to the screen. Let's see, there's uh, the, the writing ones. Okay, get text color. So this one allows you to change colors. This one, notice that it checks if the code that you're entering, or maybe you're doing some data entry, if there are any numbers included in here, as opposed to just characters. Uh, you can create message boxes. Uh, let's see, randoms, read characters. So this one, if you're gonna be doing, let's say we wanna start doing CINs and CIOs. So again, not I'm used to saying CIN because of the uh, C++ programming. But if you wanna input from the keyboard, right? If you wanna do some input reader, reading, you, you have this procedure that reads a single letter at a time. You also have this read deck, which allows you to read unsigned integers or your read hex that allows you to read hexadecimal integers. Uh, you also have your read string, which allows you to read uh, lines of text. You can copy strings, you can get the size of a string, and you can remove uh, or crop strings. Uh, you also have write. So here notice that you have write binary, write character, write decimal. So these are the ones that you use for console output. All right, to the screen. And of course you have more of these right here. Okay, so this is one example. So this one, notice that this, uh, the, the include 
Irving32.inc is not here, but you need to have it, otherwise it will not work. So here you're clearing the screen and you have a delay uh, of 500 milliseconds, right? So this is what this is doing, is clearing the screen, the screen, then you're moving 500 into EAX. And here this call calls a procedure that is inside this Irving32 list. And it will delay for uh, 500 milliseconds, and then it's going to call the next procedure that will show you all the registers that were used. In this case, uh, your EAX is used, and the other ones will probably have uh, whatever else. But EAX will have 500, right? Sample output. This is just an example. Remember that every time you run the code, you get different output for registers depending on what was available when you ran your program. So here. Is everything that's in here. Uh, another example, uh, this is how you write to the screen. So notice that you have to first declare your variable. In this case, you're using string one of type byte because these are strings. They're, so here you type assembly language is easy, uh, comma, null character. And to use your uh, Irving32 write string, you must first get the offset of your string and move that into EDX. Notice that this one is using the EDX register, and then you call the function. Uh, so this function, that's a requirement of this function. So if I move the offset into ESI, it's not going to work because this function uses EDX. Why? Because uh, more than likely, you are going to be using ESI for something else, all right? So it uses EDX, which is less used uh, for you, okay? And then it calls the carriage return, okay? Uh, this one, same thing, except that this one, notice here at the end, you have Assembly language is EC, then you have the 0D and the 0A. 0D means end of line and 0A means carriage return. So in the previous one, uh, you're omitting having to write those two hex values because you're using the uh, carriage return line feed. Okay, so that's what this one does. And uh, if you're looking at your book, by the way, in your book you have the list of every single one of the procedures in the Irving 32 library, as well as the explanation on what are the requirements and which are the registers that it uses so that you know what registers you're supposed to be setting up before you call them. Okay? Notice that this one is writing binaries. So this one, you have the value 35. So it write binary, write decimal, and write hexadecimal requires the use of the EAX register. If you do not have the EAX register set up first, you're gonna get some other junk, all right? So here you're putting 35 into EAX. So when you call write binary, that function will, or procedure, right? That procedure will uh, convert 35 into a binary number. So here it is. Write decimal, well, 35 into decimal is still 35. And then write hex, we'll get whatever is in EAX, in this case 35, and then we'll convert it into a hexadecimal value, write it to the screen. So now you can start doing this type of things in your code. Okay. Um, another example, right? Uh, to read, this is for reading from the keyboard, for example. Okay. So on and so forth. Okay to change colors, et cetera, et cetera. Please make sure that you read those uh, from your Irving library. They are in your textbook in chapter five, okay? So make sure that you read that so that you can uh, continue doing a few programs. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a program that will uh, require for you to read some numbers from the screen and manipulate them and then writing right, right to screen and so on and so forth. So please make sure that you read 
that section, the ERIN 32 library section in the chapter five of your book. 